this time of year, pediatricians are filling a lot of forms for kids to go to college. And there's a little question in there. Did your kid get this vaccine against meningococcal meningitis? Why are they insisting upon it? Is this a conspiracy? Why? Meningitis is probably the scariest word that any parent can hear. Uh, meningitis is a bacterial infection that in, invades the, the uh, spinal cord and can go up to the brain. Meningitis is actually an infection of the brain, and meningococcal disease, which is a specific type of bacteria, is very, very common in teenagers and young adults. In fact, there's about 3,000 adolescents and young adults that develop meningococcal, vac uh, meningococcal disease every year. There is a fairly new uh, vaccine, and actually it's been out uh, for quite a while. We've known about meningococcal disease for many, many years, but we finally have a vaccine that can prevent kids from getting meningococcal, vaccine, uh, meningococcal disease. The vaccine only protects against four types of uh, meningitis, four types of meningococcal disease, so it's not 100%. But the recommendation right now is for all teenagers at 11 or 12, and certainly for teenagers who are going off to college, uh, specifically those who are living in dormitories, receive this vaccine to decrease the likelihood that they're going to get meningococcal disease meningitis. Not is, it, is this, is this sa percent. vaccine safe? It's very, very safe. It's costly, uh, but most insurance companies do pay for uh, this, this uh, vaccine. Uh, the trade name is called Minatra. Uh, and, uh, but it is safe. You can get some local irritation uh, at, the, at the inoculation site. About two years ago, there was a question about a disease called Guillain-Barre syndrome, which uh, is, a, a, is a disease that uh, has, uh, can have devastating complications uh, like paralysis. Since, the, since the, um, uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics and pediatricians have been looking at this issue, we now know that Minatra, or the meningococcal vaccine, does not necessarily lead to Guillain-Barre syndrome. This well, there's a pocket of about however, 89 cases. However, right there are, have been reports of kids developing this disease, but we believe that the vaccine is still safe, but parents need to discuss with their pediatrician the risk of Guillain-Barre syndrome and make sure that that uh, vaccine is appropriate for them. should not necessarily be given to everybody. In fact, there are some, uh, some patients, teenagers and young, young adults, that they should not receive this vaccine. Okay, the Guillain-Barre cases, at least the impression most people have now, they were sporadic and it seems they, it wasn't really increased if you took 100,000 kids vaccinated 100,000 kids that weren't vaccinated, the number of cases were probably about the same, but there was a little pocket, I think, around in Maryland or someplace. That's absolutely true. If yeah. you look at the, the, the incidence of Guillain-Barre syndrome in the general population, there probably is no higher incidence in those kids who receive the vaccine. But I think this is an important discussion that every parent has to have with their pediatrician to determine if they want to have this vaccine for their teenager or young adult, especially those going off to college who are going to be living in dormitories or those who are in the military. Uh, really important to have that discussion to determine if you want to uh, have that vaccine. Well, in New York State, if a kid goes to overnight camp more than seven days, the state of New York wants the kids to have that vaccine. That's absolutely true. If you're going to a camp, a sleepaway camp, where you're spending more than seven days, you need to have this vaccine. However, if you and your pediatrician decide that there is a contraindication or the parent refuses, there are many camps that will still allow the child to participate in the overnight camp. So again, I think the, the discussion is important to have with your pediatrician. And we should talk about the cost factor just a little bit. It's about $85, $90 to buy the vaccine. Correct. So it's not an expensive... It's not cheap. Uh, as I said, most insurance companies will pay for it for those uh, people who don't have insurance or those uh, people who uh, can't afford it. There are programs like in New York State, the Vaccine for Children's program will pay for, for the vaccine for those kids who are eligible. But I would say the cost of one child's life, you can't put a figure on that. So. Absolutely. You know, $85, you know, uh, the, the truth is, as mothers and fathers, we will spend millions to protect our children, and $85 is a drop in the bucket. Um, well, then the newer vaccine seems that the, if you can culture from the nose, 3-4% uh, of kids might have a little meningococcal in the nose, and they live in dorms. I heard some studies it could be 30% after a, a few months. That's absolutely true. Sometimes kids actually harbor this bacteria and are living perfectly fine with it. We're, what we're particularly concerned about is if those kids uh, will actually expose others to uh, this disease, and that's why we're suggesting 
that the meningococcal vaccine be given to all teenagers and young adults who are living in close quarters. So military recruits, for example, uh, kids who are in, in college dorms, th those would be the, the kids who it would be appropriate for. But again, there are medical contraindications. So for example, if an adolescent or young adult uh, is immunosuppressed, uh, for whatever reason, whether they have a malignancy, they're on chemotherapy, if they have HIV or AIDS, those would be medical contraindications. So those kids should absolutely not get the vaccine. But before someone gets it, they really should go over the material and fully understand. Absolutely. I don't think anybody, no recommendation should be followed blindly. Uh, this is where the pediatrician is the expert in children and, and adolescents and young adults, and a, and, and, and a good discussion really needs to occur in the office with your pediatrician. But the CDC, the American Academy of Pediatrics, most good uh, medical groups are strongly advocating the vaccine. Absolutely. So that really, if you after you review all the information, most people are not going to be against it. But the, but there seems to be a little resistance. We do not sure about vaccines. As far as we know, this vaccine is of all of them. She's one of the safest ones we have. Absolutely. Right now. In fact, I never had a patient refuse the vaccine after I had the conversation with them and and discussed the pluses and minuses, the pros and cons of vaccination. The the pros clearly outweigh the cons. Uh, it is a safe vaccine, and and the, uh, the if your child does get meningococcal disease uh, and meningitis. The, uh, the disease itself is devastating. Right, thank you very much. Thank you.